In this video, I want to tell you more about how we're able to generate over $200,000 with a small mushroom fund like ours. Hey, glad you're here. This video is all about how to run a profitable mushroom business. So over the past 10 years, Adam and I have tried many different things and some with success, some were complete failures and we'd like to forget about. But the ones we're still doing now add income to our mushroom farm. So I'd like to explain what we do, how we do it, so that you can benefit from what we've learned. So obviously there's mushrooms grown at our mushroom farm and it's important to know that you can make it work with just mushrooms. I mean, that space on the left there was only a little over 20 square meters. We could produce 70 kilograms or so of fresh mushrooms in that small space. That's about 150 pounds a week. So it can actually be really productive in a small space. And if you can combine that with getting a high sales price for mushrooms, for instance, in Australia or New Zealand, then it might well be enough for you to earn a full time income out of this. Similarly, if you have very low overheads or living costs where you are, it might well be enough for you. But here in the UK, for us, that wasn't the case. So we, we opted for other routes and uh, rather than simply scaling up, because it wasn't the type of business that Adam and I wanted to run really, simply because you can end up with the business running you instead of you running the business. So think about it, it's scaling up of your farm, you need to um, considerably invest in it, it requires additional space, it likely requires staff and all of the stuff that comes with it. So what I'm going to talk to you about in this video are other ways that will help you to increase income in order to build a profitable mushroom business. So what that means in practice is looking at other things next to growing fresh mushrooms for sale. I'll go into each in detail, but you can see as a snapshot here that it will include, for instance, grow kits as well as workshops. And there's a whole bunch of different things that I'll touch on. So let's start with spawn then. We sell these boxes because as a mushroom farm, we always have spawn as we need it for our production. So we might as well sell it for people to get stuck in and do the whole growing process themselves. So this box here includes a little bit, um, a little less than three kilograms of quality oyster mushroom spawn and 20 mushroom bags. So then can, you can inoculate it at home with either straw, waste coffee grounds or many other substrates that you can choose. I won't go into much detail about that now. What I will add though, is that you could consider doing the same so you could sell some of the spawn to people around you. You can even open an online shop, of course. But you could also become a local mushroom spawn producer. It requires some technique for sure, but we have seen an increasing demand of people looking for small scale spawn suppliers. And in many countries, there's simply a lack of them. So consider that too. So we've also been selling grow kits for about 10 years. And the, the magic of these kits is the speed at which these mushrooms grow. You can see it develop here right in front of you. And the grow kits are a type of value added product we have. So we've been selling these for 10 years. I still love knowing that for many people, it's the first time, their first experience of growing mushrooms. And I mentioned the speed earlier. It is simply mind blowing for a lot of people who just don't realize. Many people see mushrooms in the wild occasionally, but to actually see them develop at home day by day is a real experience. It's especially popular as a gift. You can see how we make them in a separate video called Making Mushroom Grow Kits. So check it out if you feel like finding out more on this. So this is a type of value added product that we do here, but there are other routes that we could have gone down to. I just wanted to touch on them um, to see if it sparks any ideas with you. So products like dried mushrooms, mushroom tinctures, mushroom jerky, mushroom crisps, mushroom burgers, I could go on. Um, there's so many things that you can consider as a value added product. So it's especially interesting given the boom in the vegan and vegetarian foods. There's a lot, there's a whole shift away from a meat based diet to more vegetarian and vegan. And you could benefit from that if you play your cards right. So we've not done much with this, but other people have done so. So I just wanted to give you some um, examples to make you aware of this. So that sandwich you see there on the left, that's by Spore Boys in London, and they cook mushroom dishes at farmers markets and food stalls. And I bet you it's really popular because 
you know, a, a mushroom sandwich made really well is a real treat. So that one there contains a mix of mushrooms like winter chanterelles, girolles, shmeji, shiitake, golden enoki, and fresh seps. And it's just, you know, I get hungry just looking at that there. So at the top end of the meat-free product is this very recent product you can see. That's um, bacon, a, sl a slab of vegan bacon. And it's made by the food arm of a company called Ecovative. They're US-based and they do amazing stuff with mycelium-based packaging and now they're also growing into the food space. They grow meat-like mushroom tissue in gourmet sheets with various textures and structures at commercial scale in just nine days. Just coming back to the speed of growth here. Um, it's just really mind-blowing and they're, they're developing all sorts of different really tasty products. I'm looking forward to trying them. I'm not suggesting that this is easy to do, but I'm mentioning it so it gives you an indication of where all of this is going. So just to go back to our farm and what we do in addition to fruiting and selling fresh mushrooms, well we do grow a lot of substrate, but we don't fruit it all in our fruiting room here at the farm. Um, grow kits are an example of this, so we send it to people to fruit them in the comfort of their own kitchens, for instance. But we also do these larger bags that you can see on the left there. And we supply a chain across the, um, the UK with really nice hotels centred around a kitchen garden. And this allows the kitchen gardeners to fruit mushrooms at the hotels. And the chefs love it because they get to cook with the freshest mushrooms possible. At the same time, so they benefit from it, but at the same time we're able to increase the output of our farm many fold without having to add another fruiting room for instance, or indeed maintaining multiple points of contact with a lot more customers. So this works really well for us. And if you'd like to find out more, you can in a video where I go into more detail on this kind of setup. So on to the next one then, workshops where people can come to our farm for the day and learn how to grow mushrooms with our popular one day mushroom growing course. So what it means in practice is that participants take a short tour of our farm, they then get a basic 101 in mushroom biology and then it's on to the practical sessions inoculating some bags of substrate, they inoculate some logs and they make some spawn using the stem butt techniques. It doesn't need to be in this format, of course. You can also decide to opt for corporate training days like the guys at the Rotterdam in the Netherlands do. Or you could consider school visits, for instance. But do bear in mind that, unfortunately, schools often have a really tight budget. So it might not be the money spinner that you had in mind. And then finally, it's on to microgreens. And I, I can understand if you feel like, hang on, this is a bit outside the scope of running a mushroom business, Eric. What are you talking about? But let me just explain. Of course, it's a completely different crop, but it has a lot of similarities too with mushrooms. So, for instance, you make excellent use of vertical space. You don't need a lot of space to grow them at your farm. And ever since we've started growing them, they've been a great addition to the farm. It's not that we grow tons of the stuff, but since we're at the farm anyway, and this is fairly easy to bolt on, you should consider this too as an addition to growing mushrooms. So I mentioned there's some similarities and some differences. If you'd like to find out more about this, check out the video Growing Mushrooms versus Microgreens on our channel. So that gives you a good insight into how we run our farm and I hope you found it very useful. So on top of this, we also support a whole community of small scale mushroom farms worldwide. And if you'd like to find out more about setting up a low tech mushroom farm, check out the free ebook below this video. Thanks a lot for watching and take care.